Welcome to Podcast Across Worlds. I am your podcast host, Lehua Superfina, and this is my co host, Spirit Shock. We are people who read a lot of manga and watch a lot of anime. We found out that we both watch and read the same things, and we just talk about that. And we know that there are others like us. So here we are in Podcast Across Worlds, dedicated to talking about anime and manga. In today's episode one of Podcast Across Worlds, we are going to discuss our first anime and our first manga. We are going to talk about how we discover them, what followed after that, and we are going to talk about why do we still watch anime and why we still read manga today. So, Spirit Shock, how did you get into anime and manga? Well, if you grew up in the UK, and I know they had it in America as well, but the way we had it formatted was differently, was there was a time block on uh, Toonami, and you had... It was this weird show that I've never seen before, and it was unlike anything i ever seen. And kind of embarrassed to say how much I enjoyed it, because a lot of people were like, oh, Dragon Ball, and everything like that. My first actual anime I ever saw was Sailor Moon, and it was just so unlike anything you'd see in a Western cartoon. Like, you had... like The whole magical girl trope didn't exist in Western cartoons at the time. No, they didn't. No, it was like, it was during the time where Disney had their cartoons out. Yeah. So you had the princess cartoons, you had the Aladdin cartoons, you had the Darkling Ducks. (laughs) Can't forget about Gargoyles. Gargoyles. Yeah. Yeah. So there were a lot of um, Western style cartoons, like you said before, and Sailor Moon was very different. I'm surprised Toonami Mm. even had that stuff. Well, over here it was, uh, you had Dragon uh, Dragon Ball and Sailor Moon. But Sailor Moon was always on before, so that's what I used to watch first. And with that sort of stuff, you also had, later on down the line, uh, Card Captor Sakura and Escaflone. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. But the way they marketed it to the Western audience was they made it seem like an action shonen show. And when you grow up later on and see the actual intro to Card Captor Sakura, it's completely different. <laughs> it's like, holy crap, I was watching a girl's show. <laughs> like, that was before I actually knew about the different genres of anime and manga. I didn't know, like, you had your shonen, your shoujo, and everything like that. I know, but, I know how you mean. But to me, it was just like, back when it was... It was a cartoon that looked anything like other cartoons because you didn't know it was anime. No, no, you didn't even know what It was just something was. that you watched and was like, holy crap, this is cool. I remember when I first watched my animes. First, so where I grew up, I didn't have cable. So I only had the basic channels. And the first time I saw anime was when I visited family who did have cable. And my cousin was, was into anime. And for some reason, there's like a time where a certain channel would showcase a movie, a anime movie, and it'll be different every Saturday. So I was so happened to be there on that Saturday. And we were watching this movie about like, uh, what, three times three, I believe it was called. And it was about this boy who encounters this girl who has like a third eye and he has to save her. I don't really remember the whole story, but I was just fascinated with it because I've never seen a cartoon like this before. And because I was only visiting that family, I never saw that artwork again. It was like one time thing, one and done. I searched for it on my basic TV to never find it. Then one day, one morning, I was up early enough before I caught the bus. I was up early enough to watch morning cartoons on the weekday. What comes on? Sailor Moon. <laughs> Fighting evil by moonlight. And I'm not the one who found it. My parents did. They're like, oh, look, there's something on. You can watch this before you catch your bus. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> and I'm watching it, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. And ever since then, I'll wake up early enough to watch it. 
And then it'll get like towards the end. I'm thinking like, oh no, my bus is almost here. Should I should I miss this bus or do I have to miss this episode? Because I didn't know when they were going to do reruns. I was like, <laughs> when am I going to see this again? <laughs> You didn't. You wouldn't even know if there was going to be a rerun, and then, like you said, then Escaflone came on, Digimon came on, and then yeah. Card Captors. Uh, Card Captors Sakura. It was. It, it was one of those shows that you're like, oh yeah, this is an action show, and then when you find out what it actually is. <laughs> but if he comes to not just shows and goes back to movies, I can probably think of one thing I watched before. Sailor Moon as a show, but it was more of a. I found it because it was on. Someone recorded it on a VHS. Oh. And it was on Sci Fi Channel. And it was the movie Akira. Oh. And that was my first exposure to like more of a adult anime. Oh, if you're going for adult anime, oh, I have one too. I'm not going to that adult anime. I know, I know, but like, uh, like, okay. So, we would rent VHS from the rental store. And my brother and I, we were into samurai ninja stories. <clears throat> and so, we found a cartoon version. We're like, oh, Ninja Scrolls. This looks cool. Oh, no. Oh, Okay, so you get what I mean. First, adult yeah, anime. Yeah, I've watched, I've, <laughs> I watched Ninja Scrolls years ago, and I know what it is. Yeah, so, you know, I'm, I was young. I want to say I was, like, six years old. My brother, he's, like, eight years older than me. So we're watching it, and we get to a part where the big guy, he's licking the girl. I had no idea what was happening. I was just like, why is he licking her? And my brother is like, ew, no, like, who uh, Cover your eyes. And I'm like, why? Like, I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> I just knew. That's kind of a traumatizing one to start. <laughs> and, and I just knew that the girl got beat and this guy is just playing with her. And I'm like thinking, when is she going to be saved? When is she going to fight back? And then the male protagonist comes along. <clears throat> so that was my first adult anime. And it was in the movie version, too. Definitely not, I'd say, a novice one to start with when you're that young. Yeah, definitely not. Definitely not. My brother and I, we just saw the cover. We read the, my brother read the back. He told me about it, and I was like, yeah, let's watch this. <laughs> it turns out it was graphic. It was very adult. Luckily, I didn't know what was going on, fortunately. <laughs> but when I look back... When I saw it again, I was like, oh, my God. They still let me watch this? The people in my family had faith in me. <laughs> so we talked about our first anime show, our first anime movie. What was the first manga? Oh, God. I don't remember the name of the first manga. How did you encounter it? Uh... At school, every now and again, we'd get, if you went to the, there was like a library club where you'd go and read books of different things and everything. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was a Western book, but in an anime style. Oh. And I was reading that and it was like, wait, this book's wrong. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you read right to left. <laughs> so it was like, wait, what's going on? And you look at the first page, it's like, oh, this is a anime style, so you have to read it this way. I was like, wait, no, I mean manga style. I was like, wait, you have to read it this way? And so I'm reading it, I thought, this is stupid. <laughs> but what made me want to read it is because I used to enjoy comic books a lot. And manga is very similar to a comic. Mm -hmm. and that was my first introduction, and I remember hating it. Oh my, yeah. then what got you to read more? If you hated that one. I, first series I picked up on my own was probably Bleach. Oh, that's a good one. 
and I started reading Bleach before the I ever saw the anime. And what got me into that one more is kind of I used to read like superhero comics. And then when you go from like Spider Man to Superman, saving the day and getting a bit beat up, then you go to Bleach where you've got demonic creatures killing people and ghosts and all that. Then you've got Ichigo being a Soul Reaper. That was unlike anything I read. Like I know there were of a more mature comics at the time, but being a kid reading like superhero stuff and not knowing about the dark stuff like Constantine and that, it was more of a fascination. Same with when I started watching Sailor Moon because it was unlike anything else I had ever seen. Same here, same here. And now, <laughs> I'm going to say, what I read more than books now, I read light novels and manga. <laughs> and anime takes up probably 90% of everything I watch. <laughs> so, for me, my first manga, I remember it. I totally remember Boku it. no Pico. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was in junior high, and I was sitting next to a girl, and she was reading Inuyasha, and I always saw her reading that. And this was during the time where I'm like really shy, and I want to be take the initiative. And so I asked her, like, "Oh, what are you reading?" You know, I just started for conversation's sake, just to start getting to know her. And then she talks about, it and she's showing. The manga to me she's showing me the pages and i'm like what's going on here like there's there's a lot going on i'm seeing inuyasha fighting someone and then i see his brother sashomaru fighting him I'm like oh this guy's really pretty who's this and she's telling me about their stories why they don't like each other and how they got into the situation i'm like oh my gosh this is really cool and then she offered to let me borrow it and she gave me the first volume. And after I was done with that, I asked, oh, what's the next volume? Where is it? Where can I get it? She's like, oh, I have it. Um, let me uh, take this book back and then I'll give you the rest. I'm like, oh, awesome. And then I got to a point where she didn't have any more volumes. And I asked her, like, oh, where can I find these? And she said, well, you can buy them at the bookstore or you can go to the library. I'm like, hold up. The library has these? And then from there, we would read like the same story. She would show me other manga. Like the next one, I believe, was Fushigi Yugi. And that one day, she had all the books, or well, at least until up to up to the ones that were published, at least. <laughs> and then there was like a group of us that were into reading manga, watching the anime. Some of them found the anime, and then we would sleep over at each other's places and watch it. And and then some of them would say, oh, yeah, I also read stuff online. I'm like, online? Where are you reading, what? Where are you reading this online? Because, you know, I've been, like, buying the books. You know, they're $10 each, okay? <laughs> yeah, for anyone who's listening and doesn't know, if you read manga, reading manga is really expensive. Yeah, they're like $10. <laughs> each book and how many chapters you get like six chapters and you gotta wait a month or two for the next volume <laughs> like, also when they take a break and you have to wait two years oh yeah so they're having like writer's block or like they burnt out or where they just decide to discontinue the series in the west <laughs> oh my gosh that's the worst you're... And you're just sat there with all these books around you, just screaming, why? Oh, man. And so I was interested in mangas because I originally liked to read fantasy books. So my favorite genre was fiction, fantasy, or sci-fi. And all these stories were in the fantasy genre. There were monsters, demons, the protagonist is saving the world. And, you know, that splash of romance, keeping you interested, keeping you in suspense, which I was a little irritated with. You know, they take so long 
to get to the good part when the two main characters finally get together, it's like it's about damn time. <laughs> <laughs> like for example, with Bleach, Bleach, you're like, okay, so who is he gonna get together with? There's like he has options. Ichigo has yeah, these it, options. So it kind of alludes a little bit to Rukia, but he ends up with Orihime. Right. So it's like, so you find out like how many chapters later? <laughs> and I'm, I'm really impressed by how these authors keep readers interested. Like they're able to, you know, hold the carrot in front of us. We're just waiting to get to the good part, and sometimes they just lengthen that whole battle. And I'm so into the story that I'm willing to wait. Sometimes I feel a little silly for waiting, but sometimes I'm like, heck yeah! Finally, we got it. We got to that part. <laughs> but sometimes that wait can feel like it wasn't worth it. Yeah. Yeah, it gets like a little anticlimactic. So that helps us transition to the next question is why do we still like it? Why do we still put ourselves in these situations <laughs> where we're waiting for episodes and chapters? Well, I'd say the reason I still watch a lot of anime and read a lot of manga is it still get experiences that you won't get in Western media. I One thing I'll say about, and it may be controversial and everything like that. I don't think you can pull off horror that well in many forms in anime. Because I know you get like the, when they animate it, you'll have the eyes shaking and you can hear maybe a bit of a quiver in the voice. But what they do in anime is because of like limitations in like facial expressions, they'll over animate. But if you go into other ways, if they go into the psychological side of it, I think some of the best horror anime is psychological. Do you and have any if you, examples? I think Shiki's a really good example of that. Explain why Shiki. Well, I'm, I'm going to sound stupid if I've got this wrong, but it starts off with like people being afraid of the monsters and people are disappearing and everyone's after these monsters. But there's a twist halfway through and it changes how you are thinking. It's like, wait, who are the real monsters in this? Because it gets you thinking because it turns out maybe the humans are the bad ones. And watching it, it, was, it leads you to believe one thing and then that turn you get. It, uh, I would say the only time I've felt like that up until that point was when I was watching Berserk. And reading Berserk. Oh, Berserk! That's a good one too. That's a and dark Berserk one. is my all-time favorite anime. It's my favorite manga. I've got the mark of the sacrifice tattooed on my arm. Oh, shut the front door! And when you see that and how the characters develop, and this, you don't just see, the, like, well, it is a very gory anime and very gory manga. But, also but you also delve into the psychological side of characters, like you find out why Guts gets the way he does, you find out why Casca's broken, you find out why Femto is a piece of shit. <laughs> the way that they do it, I think these certain psychological situations, you can only do this in anime and manga. Like Junji Ito, his manga is amazing, his horror anime, uh, manga. It, I, don't, I don't think it portrayed well into anime form. So sometimes you do have to go with a manga. What this just made me think of, so a lot of um, Western cartoons, they, they're pretty straightforward. It's like point A, point B, point C, the end. And it's the same format over and over and over. And it's not common for the cartoons to delve into the character's story, their background. And... With anime, they do that. So at first, we see them, right? We see the characters, and we're like, oh, yeah. this is We categorize you now. We're judging you now. But then as we get more into the series, we get their stories, and then we, we learn how fucked up their lives were. And it's like, holy shit. I had no idea. And it makes you 
more attached to that character, I want to say.、Mm. And it makes you, I don't know, closer to them. It becomes more personal. You feel empathetic, related to them, and you just want to see them go through the journey successfully or to perish successfully. Because, you know, <laughs> sometimes you get that antagonist that you think is the shittiest person ever, and you hate their guts, and you learn why they got like that. And then you're like, you kind of feel sorry for them. Like, oh man, I kind of feel bad that I called you a shitty person. But then it still doesn't justify their actions, you know? Yeah. Like... <laughs> That's how you know a character is written really well when you despise that character. Right. You have a burning hatred for them. Not because they're badly written, but because they're so well written, you actually feel real emotion towards the character, be it a positive one or a negative one. And one that me and you are obsessed with. And it's not a manga, it's a manhwa solo leveling. Yes, 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 yes. Like how that starts off, where he's like the weakest of the weak, and how it slowly snowballs and builds up and builds up, and then it's like, oh, we'll take this and add it here. We'll take this and add it here. Please tell us more about his father. And then it keeps adding and adding and adding. Right. And then it's what it is now. It's like that sort of stuff. I don't, I maybe. I haven't seen it a lot in TV. I've seen it in comic books, but it's, I think it's something that may be able to only do in print form with certain things. But you get more of stuff like that in anime. And I don't know if it's because it's animated, but you tend to find that more in Japanese anime or manga or manhwa. Another good example is Netflix. They had an anime Voltron where they did. Have this one guy who was supposed he was a prince, and you would you thought he was a good guy, but then it turned out he was a bad guy stealing people, using their life force to use as energy, and then you learn why he ended up like that. And it was because of his parents, mostly because of his mother, and then they got to the part to the mother, and she wasn't always a bitch. She was actually an intelligent, peaceful woman, but, for, but because of her research, she was, I guess, power hungry. Not really power hungry, but she wanted more knowledge and she wanted to know more about this certain energy to the point where she wanted to be absorbed in it. And she used herself as an experiment and she wanted to know more. She wanted to gain more. And that just. Messed her up, warped her psychologically, emotionally, to the point where it affected her son. And then she ended up eradicating planets to get their energy so she could get to this machine or this portal so she could go back in time and fix all her mistakes. And it's like, holy crap, I thought you were just a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> But no, you wanted to go back in time to fix your mistakes. <laughs> And in the process, you just kill whole civilizations. Great. You know, you're horrible for killing people. But I can empathize with you wanting to fix your problems. But still, wouldn't you have done it a different way? And that's a great writer. Being able to do that, take us through that journey and making us feel sorry for the bad guys. Great. Thanks, writer. <laughs> <laughs> also, like how in certain situations where they can present an art style to you and that can trick you into not knowing what it's going to be about. Oh, yeah.、Uh, my, I... my Hero Academia did that to me. <laughs> oh, yeah, My Hero Academia. I thought that was going to be your average Shonen show, but you do, how you much、do. emotion and how dark that show can get. Man, I thought it was going to be like another、uh, like One Piece thing. Oh, One、tale. Piece fairy tale type thing. Yeah, I was like,、oh, I've already seen something like that. Meh. And then you start watching, it's like, this is really good. Yeah. 
Another one that's very similar that caught me off guard, and we may discuss this in the future on another time, another place, was B Stars. Ah, yes, 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 yes. It, saying that, even the premise of that time I was reincarnated as a slime, how in depth that actually ended up getting. Right. I liked how it got detailed in the evolving of the characters, like literally evolving. So there, there are monsters in this story, and they can evolve, and when they evolve, um, they become more powerful, or they become more intelligent, they get more skills, and then it got to the part of the humans aspect of it, and how they're corrupted, and how their system works, and then we have our slime main character, who's like, you know, I'm just trying to <laughs> survive in this world, I have these people I need to take care of, oh, look, humans are trying to uh, kill us, no, 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 we need to work with the humans, oh, we need to make a city now. Okay, let's make a city. It's like, wow, this is developing a lot, a lot more than I thought it was. <laughs> and it's to the point where now the main character, he's becoming like a demon lord. And you, we never thought that was going to happen because he was so against that. He was like, I don't want to be a hero. I don't want to be a demon lord. I just want to relax with all the people I love. But no, because certain things happened, he got to that point, and it's like, dang! Kind of saw this happen, wasn't expecting this to happen. <laughs> like, did you? <laughs> did you see that coming? No, and I'm actively keeping up with that series because it did throw me for a curveball. <laughs> well, I think one of the bits that played off really well in that was his relationship with Malim. Oh, yeah. His bestie for rest day. Explain that. Explain that to everyone. <laughs> it's just the fact that you've got, he knows that she's stronger than him and she's going to fight and he's like, okay, I'm going to use my special technique. And he just puts honey in her mouth. <laughs> and he's like, oh, well, does that mean I've won? I'll, I'll give you more. And she, and she doesn't want to admit she's lost. So she's let's call it a draw. <laughs> oh, that's a really good example of like how in anime and manga, there are stereotypical characters. Where so I thought Milim was going to be that character that's um super hyper. Like the over energetic 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 over energetic character that's oblivious to everything around her and she just goes straight for her goal and that's it i find well, she I, even says she doesn't see anything other than fighting as right. a thing that a demon lord does right you get to fight strong people and that's it right right and so when i first saw her i was like oh gosh she just wants to fight our slime. She just wants to be stronger than him. She just wants to beat him. Be like, yes, I won. Now, bow down to me. But no, it turns out she wanted friends. So it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> and the fact that everyone's in love with him as well. Oh, yes. They have to be in love with him because he is the bomb. He's the best. Another one that you don't expect it to be the way it is was Rising the Shield Hero. Oh, yeah. You thought it was going to be another typical... Well, I thought it was going to be another typical Isekai. But then you have the main hero falsely accused of rape by the princess. And is now shunned. And how it evolves into the point it is now. That was quite a... Roller coaster of what it did. Rising of the Shield Hero. If you haven't watched it, you or read it, it is one of those you need to read it and watch it because of how well it is done. 
and how well it explores the psyche of not just heroes but of the bad people. In a lot of um, hero stories, isekai, people who are put in another world, or for example, like Sailor Moon, Fire Captors, the main character is just put in that situation and you know they're going to succeed and they have all the support around them. You know, they have these guides, you know, like Sailor Moon. She had Luna, the cat, who was teaching her how to do things. Sakura, she had the... Uh, what was his name? Hiro? 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 Yeah. She had him guiding her. And in a lot of other hero shows, they always had someone guiding them. Someone helping them. And then they... My Hero Academia Midori as All Might. Right. And then you get... They get companions one after another. They just gravitate to the main character. But in Shield Hero, you know, it kind of starts off with that. But you get a... You get a feeling that something's not right. You saw the comparison between him, the spear, the sword, the bull heroes. You're like, oh, this seems weird. But, oh, it's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. And then all of a sudden... He gets charged with rape. He's being prosecuted. He's being discriminated. It's like, whoa! whoa, whoa, whoa yeah, he up, starts off with the as all the other heroes, but then all that's ripped away from him, and he's seen as the outcast. And how he gets his companions as well, it's not the gravitate towards him. Like It's just a situation that leads into them gravitating, but it's not started off that way as many others like when he meets Raftalia she's a little slave girl and because he's the shield hero he can't attack and so he's like okay you're gonna I'm gonna defend I'm gonna take the blow and you're gonna do it if not you're gonna die man it really showed that it was you gotta work you gotta work hmm. for it and the shield hero he had to work for getting that companion for someone to fight for him. He had to train her. He had to make her really tough, hard. Be like, you can't be afraid of these monsters. If you're afraid of these monsters, you're going to die. And I can't do anything except defend you. So it's all up to you. And if you can't help me, then I'm going to find someone else. <laughs> it was like, dang, boy. <laughs> he's like, he's like, shit, if no one's going to help me, I got to help myself. And if no one's going to help me, I'll buy them to help me. <laughs> it was that bad. And you also saw, like, the softening of characters as well, like how close Raftalia and Naofumi end up getting. And when Philo slash Firo come into it, how it gets like that, but you still see the prejudice of all the people around him. Like, when the guards end up helping him, and then you still, and because they think, well, he's not a bad guy. I, I don't really know if this is true and everything. You still have the other guards saying, you're not helping him, you're coming with us, he's no good. So, people are still being, even if they're trying to warm up to him, they're being pulled away. And it isn't toward, until toward the, towards the end of the series where you get to see all this coming together and finding out why it is the way it is and everything like that. And it turns out it's a huge plot against the S.H.I.E.L.D. hero. Which I'm and still what it's done, trying to figure it's out. It's really good. Yeah, that's the thing, you, so, in these stories, it's like they, they show you a snippet of what the plot is. You think you know what the plot is, but then later on it shows you, okay, actually there's a bigger plot than this. So, for example, I'm going to give spoilers to Shield Hero. So, for example... For some reason... Hashtag spoiler alert. <laughs> for example, uh, in the kingdom, you know that there's prejudice against the shield hero, but you don't know why. And then it leads up to, okay, there's a church. There's a church that idolizes the other heroes except for the shield yeah, hero. Yeah, Church of the Three Heroes. Yeah, and then they explain that the... What was the, the beast people called? What were they called? The djinns? No. <sighs> I'm going to get it wrong. I thought it was like demi-humans. Demi-humans, yes, 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 yes. Yes. So the demi-humans uh, idolize the shield hero from the past because they've been generations, different generations of heroes. 
So the shield hero was... And the shield hero has always helped the demi-humans. He's yeah. always stood up for them. Yeah, so you would assume that the church is against the shield hero because there's prejudice against the demi-humans. So it's like, okay, shield hero likes the demi-humans. We will go against the shield hero, make our own uh, religion for the other heroes. So now there's that segregation, that separation. <clears throat> All because the shield hero is on the demi-human side. But then, later on in the story, you find out it's something bigger than that. <laughs> it's like, oh. Well, well, story, what else are you going to reveal to me, huh? Huh? And then, later on, you learn that there are other worlds with other heroes. And you're like, what the fuck? Like, does this story ever end? No, it doesn't. So keep watching. Keep reading. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you can't tell, we both really enjoy Shield Hero. And and the amazing part is Shield Hero started out as a light novel, right? Yeah, uh, well, many mangas start off as a light novel, but yeah, Shield Hero was a light novel. Yeah, so it's like, no wonder it has so much details. No wonder it's so convoluted. This person had to write out a whole new world. <laughs> And I guess that's where it connects to my like of reading fantasy stories because these authors, they have to write a whole new world. They have to figure out, okay, how do I make this country? How do I make this organization? How are people interacting with each other? Why are these people thinking the way they think? And depending how great the author is, they will be able to make a amazing story. Like some do it kind of basic. They keep it in one city, one kingdom. That's it. Done. But this one, the one for Shield Hero, made worlds. Different worlds. I appreciate your work. I see your effort, author. You hmm. have my heart. I find Overlord in the same vein as that as well. Which starts off as yet another video game Isekai. Mm. And you get to see more of the political side and the fact of a human slowly using, losing his humanity because he's now in the body of a lich. And it kind of, you kind of forget that at some points, but then you, you'll, you'll, cause you'll see characters interacting and everyone's having a nice time. But <laughs> then you see people getting tortured because they entered their base. Yeah. There are bad anime and manga out there, same as there are with many things of other media. For example? But... <laughs> oh, I don't, want to, I don't want to cause a load of hate. Saw that online. <laughs> <gasps> I like that one. How come you don't like it? It's horribly paced. It's horribly written. <laughs> the, char- the entire thing's about, oh, Kirito. Oh, we love Kirito. And... The fairy dance arc is horrible. <laughs> well, if you just block that out, it is an interesting story. It's got an interesting premise. So, like, okay, so my partner hates it when I do this. I fast forward in episodes when I'm watching anime. Like, if I can see that it's like, uh, it's not really progressing in the story, I'll fast forward. I'd hate that. Okay, so you hate that. <laughs> yeah, you have to watch from start to finish because otherwise you missing you can be missing out on a lot of integral plot points. Right, right. So fortunately, fortunately, I think Netflix and uh Hulu does this. You can still see uh what's going on if you fast forward, like you can see the change in the pictures. So I do that. I look at it, and if I, it looks like a big battle is happening or a big confrontation is happening, a reveal, I'm like, oh, wait, let's stop here. It looks like something good, good is happening. But, 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 uh, I haven't had to do that in Sword Art Online. For some reason, I, I didn't have to do that. Yeah, because it does all the fucking fast forward and skipping by itself. <laughs> Which part? They're on floor one, then all of a sudden they're on floor 80. Oh, thank God. Thank God they did that. Gosh, I read the manga it, and it was just them fighting, fighting, and fighting. I'm <laughs> like, uh, there was no time for character development. 
Well, they kind of already set set it up where Kirito and Asuna, the new main characters, they're really good. You can they already set that up, so you're like, okay, guaranteed they're gonna be the best of the best later on in the story. So it's like for me, I'm like, okay, if I know they're gonna do really good, I know they're pretty OP because of their knowledge and skills. I don't want to see them level up while I know they're going to do great. I already know they're going to do great. I want to get to the part where they struggle. <laughs> the struggle. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get to the point where they struggle and they fast forward to that part where they struggled. But they I like character development. I don't <laughs> Soda online is one of the most horribly paced the pieces like... of well, Crap ever. With Kirito, you do see his character development where um you you learn why he was a solo player. Did you get to that part? Well, there's multiple reasons why he's a solo player. Oh, okay. So um well yeah, there's multiple reasons, but at least in the anime they showed that there's a part where he did try to work with a party, but then they died. And he feels guilty for that. He's like, if I can't protect others, then I'll just go on my own. And he became a solo player, and because he was a solo player, he did struggle. You know he struggled, but because of that, he did get to the point where he is, being powerful, being really good at what he does. And then he encounters Asuna, who did work with a guild, a party, and she leveled up with them. And because he's with Asuna, someone who can take care of herself, he does end up working with others. He's not a solo player anymore. And then you have this development of people who came to terms, accepted that they are stuck in this world until they reach to the last floor and beat the boss. I think you've just convinced yourself that you like the show. <laughs> Actually, I was... Okay, the reason why I kept with it because I was curious how they would go back to their world. I was like, so how are they going to do this? Like, they're, they were really weak in the beginning. All of them were weak. They're all level ones. I'm like, okay, how are you guys going to do this? And a lot of them were, like, freaked out. Some of them were panicking. They thought they were never going to survive. These were people that were probably pampered, spoiled in their world. And all of a sudden, they're just thrown in the world. Like, okay, survive. Mm -hmm. You have no, no benefits, no buffs. <laughs> you you gotta work for it and I was curious how people would do that and I could see why you were annoyed that they fast forward because you didn't see people struggle through that Like, and then you've got Yui with daddy and mommy that one was weird and I think they did damage control on that because later on she was used for hacking <laughs> I'm... You're just trying to convince yourself you like a bad show here. <laughs> no, 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 no! It's getting good because like, they got to the end. the The big boss turned out to be the guy who created the game, and so they defeated well... him. And then after that, in the fairy world, it turned out. It turned out the main enemy is Mister Rapey McGropey. Right. Yes, and he was just crazy. He hijacked the project, put people back into the game, trapped Asuna there, and then you had to defeat him. And then, and then they continued the story with uh, the Fatal Gun. The Fatal Gun. Uh, Gun Girl Online. Yeah, that one. And I don't know why they continued the story, but they made it work by saying that people who were stuck in Sword Art Online were still messed up and they wanted to continue to kill people. And since they had the taste of killing people in real life, they wanted to continue that. And then somehow that transitioned to, oh yeah, there's people who wanted who took the program that trapped people in Sword Art Online and they're going to use that for military uses. And uh, yeah, we're to that point right now in Alicization. <laughs> in its defense, I have heard Alicization is not that bad compared to the rest of the series. No, it's really different. It's really different. So in uh, the first 
season it's okay it's people who have never who never really took the game world seriously because they just viewed it as a game and because of that some of them died they're like yeah i'll just be brought back to life totally yeah i don't mind dying no you're dead forever you should have taken this seriously and there is people who had to adapt to the situation they made the world their own they like for example there's a girl who was into making weapons she ended up making a shop making weapons so in alicization it's people who grew up in this this what is it called virtual world they were programs uh copied from fluctuates of real people and because time went by fast in this world generations were made so one set of people were made from the fluctuates and then they made children then they made children and it turned it resulted that this whole world uh view the creators of the world as gods and what they see as system commands they see it as their skills things that they can do but they're restricted and there's a whole religion going on and the religion was made so that whoever is in charge of the religion is the most powerful because there's a command where if you kill things it increases your authority level and so there's a rule of no you can't kill anyone there's no killing so no one could kill anything that's a taboo rule the person who's in charge of the religion somehow was able to hack into the system so they can monitor and once they find someone who broke the rule they will kidnap them well it's not really kidnap arrest them quote arrest them and then erase their memories and brainwash them and this whole world this whole system was to make the perfect ai the perfect ai to be used in military purposes but the people who were in charge of this program they couldn't find that perfect ai because there is another ai that took over and made this stupid religion <laughs> because to make the perfect ai to use in war that ai has to be able to kill right but some some program some ai in this world prevented that because they wanted to be in charge they wanted to be as powerful as a programmer so that was interesting and then you got kibito here who's like okay i know how the real world works and this whole thing going on in this computer world does not seem right <laughs> yeah there's this part where um so there's no killing right so there's this part in alicization where one of the characters did kill and there's a scene where one of the monitors says oh system error system error you are you are violating this code this rule and when that pops up all the characters in this program beings people civilians all these civilians civilians in this uh program they feel like a urge to follow the command the rule but this guy's like no someone's about to kill my friend i need to kill this person to protect my friend and so he uses his whole willpower and the the controlling was in one of their eyes and because he went against that rule he went against the command his eye exploded it's like the command the the admin the person watching over had a malfunction and just exploded in his eye later on in the story they meet people who didn't realize what was going on but they explain what happens when you go against the commands and that the eye explodes and such and people are like oh i have felt something weird when i wanted to do something but for 
for unknown reason, I stopped. I don't know why, but I stopped. And Kirito and the rest were explaining, look, oh yeah, that's because of the program. The program wants to see if you can go against it and survive. The program wants you to go against that rule and see if you can work on your own. Be that independent AI and not just something that follows commands. Being the perfect soldier. Yes, are you going to watch it now, Spirit? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the twist for me was I thought the program uh, was the one that made the religion. I thought the programmers made the religion, but it turned out it was one of the AIs that made that religion just so she could be the most powerful one, have the authority. I thought that was a very interesting twist because she, she wanted to leave the whole program. She, she didn't want to be stuck in that world. She wanted to be outside, be with the programmers. But the thing is, how is she going to do that if she doesn't have a body in our world? But she didn't know that. She thought there was like a whole other world that she could conquer with her authority level. It was like, no, sister, no, you're, you're in way over your head. You're being way too narcissistic. I kind of wanted her to succeed and find out the truth. But then Kirito and party... They just, you know, defeated her and went on to the next art. Oh, speaking of that, so you know how there's Kirito, right? Yeah. At the end of the arc where they they defeat the AI that made the religion, something happened and his brain got messed up. So he wasn't the protagonist in the next arc. And then that's when they brought Asuna. And they're trying to figure out how to make Kirito right. But instead of Kirito being the main character, it's Asuna and Alice. It's them and everyone else. So that's interesting too. Because you always saw Kirito as the hero. The guy who saves the day. But no, he's brain dead. It's like, oh, ho, ho, what you guys going to do now? Your best player is brain dead. Yeah. He'll probably wake up at the end to save the day. Oh, he still hasn't. He's still brain dead. No, they'll do it at the end. Yeah, at the end. Yeah, that was well, welcome to the Sword Art Online podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wanted to defend it at least. I thought it was a good story. <laughs> I can't remember any story I didn't like. I can't remember any. Like, I know I dislike some. But that's like 10%. 90% I like it. 10% I dislike it. Like, for example, um, Fushigi Yugi. That's a story about a girl who gets summoned to a world. She's like the head priestess. She needs to collect these things, summon the god, etc., etc., etc. I got annoyed with her interaction with one of the characters. Like, I found her so annoying. I hated that she was being a damsel in distress, but the story was so good. I wanted to see it to the end. I'm like, you know what? These other characters are awesome. I like the story. I can think of one where I enjoy the manga, but I dislike the anime for one reason. And that was uh, Fuka. Well, that's because they changed a huge pivotal plot point. The character named Fuka was supposed to die. Uh huh. And she was, and later in the manga, she was replaced by. Another character with, I think the same name. Could be wrong with that. But, uh, Fuka was hit by a bus. Well, dang! But in the anime, they changed that and they combined two characters into one. They didn't kill off the character. Why and not? And for me, I feel like that changes the tone of that show. Wait, when was this made? What, Fuka? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Was this when they were like trying to not be so graphic? And mm. and appease a certain type of audience, because you remember they're just um showing like happy go lucky, magical girl, kids saving the day anime, and then no, after... this was a twenty seventeen anime. Ah, oh, wait, no, no, that does not make sense. They should have they should have kept that bus killing scene then. 
says, we can handle it now. <laughs> like, uh, like after late night tsunami, uh, adult swim, we should be able to handle this now. For me, it just was a huge, it was a small change in the, what actually happened, like, oh, she's, she's alive now, but it changes the whole feel of the show for me. It's, how else is it? Uh, trying to think of another pack. My mind is drawing a blank. Uh, uh, Tokyo Ghoul. Tokyo Ghoul? Yeah, the second season of Tokyo Ghoul anime. Tokyo Ghoul... I don't know if it's uh, Root A or Alpha Root, or I keep forgetting which one it is. That is mostly its own thing, and some people genuinely hate it. I haven't watched that one, or read, or read it. <laughs> Tokyo Ghoul, but I heard oh, it was Tokyo good. Ghoul's good. I heard it was really good, but I haven't, I haven't gotten it yet. I'd recommend it. And uh, Tokyo Ghoul will be on another episode sometime in the future. Then. <laughs> yes. Next episode, B stars. <laughs> for everyone listening into podcasts across the world, we have a question for you. Every episode, we are going to have a question for listeners, and this episode's question is: What was your first anime or manga we want to hear your story so let us know in the comments or in the superfina discord link will be available in the description we would like to hear your story of your first anime and manga or one or the other you don't have to say for both you can just tell your story about the anime or the manga it's really up to you but we just want to hear everyone's story because this is what the podcast is about. The podcast is about discussing about anime and manga and our passion for it. And if you have any topics you'd like us to discuss on Podcast Across Worlds, leave it in the Discord tab under Podcast Across Worlds. So following that, on the next episode of Podcast Across Worlds, we are going to talk about Beastars. In the comments, in the Superfina Discord, Podcast Across World thread, let us know what you want to talk about, what topics, what anime, what manga. That way, we could talk about what you want to hear. I'm Lehua Superfina. You can find me on all social medias at Lehua Superfina. Weekly, I upload videos about video games, manga, and candy masks at youtube.com slash superfina. I also stream every Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time at twitch.tv slash Lehua Superfina. I am Spirit Shock. You can find my stuff in the description. There's my Twitter. There's my Instagram. Not yet, but it will be. Just have a look. My YouTube is also there, all nice and shiny. And I stream a variety of games. Also, I have a series upcoming called Tinfoil Hat Talks where I talk about different theories in manga and video games and that concludes our episode for podcasts across worlds thank you all for tuning in and keep reading manga keep watching anime and keep listening to podcasts across worlds we will see you on the next episode since you're still here how about leaving a like and while you're at it subscribe ring the bell so you can get notifications I want to give a huge, huge shout out to my Patreons and channel members because you all have been supporting the Superfina channel and it's not even required. So I really appreciate you. You are all in my heart. If you also want to support the Superfina channel, here's a link to the Patreon along with a list of social media. All the links are available in the description below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I have much love, much aloha for y'all, and I will see you later.